fantastic. Uh, thank you. And thank you for inviting me to present my paper at the conference. Um, I endeavour to be a museum archaeologist, but for the moment I'm just an archaeologist. And today I am just talking about the methodology that I'm using in my PhD research for evaluating visitor perceptions and engagements with prehistory displays. And I'll present that through three case studies. So to start off with, I'm going to give a bit of a brief introduction about my PhD research and the methodology that I'm using for visitor data collection. Uh, then I'll go over some general trends that I found in how prehistory is presented in museums. And then I'll present the findings from three of my case studies and finish with some general reflections about what styles of display are quite engaging. So to start off with, why exactly am I interested in prehistory? Well, I am very biased. I love prehistory. covers all human history right up until the written record. In Britain, we're looking like 900,000 years ago to about AD 43 with the arrival of the Romans. And yet often it's uh, misunderstood by the public. It's only recently entered the national curriculum. In this massive time period, so many different things are happening. And museums play a really vital role in communicating the sometimes complex narratives of prehistory in both an accessible and an engaging way. Often prehistory collections, they aren't the most aesthetically pleasing, uh, there's lack of organic remains, and sometimes the interpretation can be a bit ambiguous. So how do you engage the public with that? So for my PhD research, I'm trying to produce a record of how different types and sizes of museums present prehistory and hoping to identify some patterns within that, as well as recognising what perceptions visitors have about the period and whether this is reinforced or if it's challenged in museum displays. And finally, to find out what are the styles of display and those narratives that are really engaging. And to do this, I've got a two-part methodology. I've got my macro scale and my micro scale. At the macro scale, to get an idea of the bigger picture, I'm trying to record as many different types of prehistory display. And this is sort of my hit list of places that I would really like to visit. And I'm really open to suggestions of prehistory displays that you know of. I know you very kindly already circulated my plea for help on this, uh, which has been really helpful. I'm trying to get um, as better coverage as I can of England and a bit wider in the British Isles, but I know that's going to be pretty impossible. Um, and on my micro scale, I am collecting visitor data in the form of tracking surveys and questionnaires at six different types of museums. And these are the six museums that I've been doing this at. I've got one more left to go, which is the one at the bottom, which is later this month. And so far through my macro scale, I visited 86 prehistory displays, 74 of which are within the British Isles. And you'll notice that there are some big gaps on my map of the United Kingdom there. And it's my aim over this next year to really start to fill in those gaps. And what am I doing when I go to visit these various displays? I'm recording certain variables of display. And these are based very much on the display variables that uh, Stephanie Moser and Gemma Tully looked at when they were looking at how ancient Egypt is represented in museums. <coughs> so firstly, I'm looking at what prehistory is called, if it has got a particular name in a museum, because what we call it really affects how people engage and relate to it. If it's seen as something familiar, perhaps part of someone's identity, or if it's seen as something distant and irrelevant. But I'm also looking at the uh, time period covered. Is the Paleolithic right through to the Iron Age on display? Or is there a particular focus on a certain period of prehistory? Also taking into account the age of the gallery and looking more at the stylistic features, what the colour scheme is and the lighting, and if there's additional decoration in the gallery space, as well as the relationships between the objects. Are they quite densely packed together in cases, or is there more of a focus on certain star objects on their own? Also looking at the narrative framework, is it a chronological display or is it more thematic? And whereabouts in the museum is it situated? Is it near the front? Is it near the back? And how much of it is on display? Is there an entire room or simply just a case? And so far from my 74 museum visits, I've noticed a few general trends. Firstly, the narrative of the displays tends to be quite consistent. I'm sure it's a narrative we're all quite familiar with, and it seems to be quite similar across different types of museums and across time. It's one in which the Paleolithic is referred to in terms of first people, the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, the Neolithic first farmers, and the Bronze Age, the first use of metals. And it's only with the Iron Age that you start to see more of a, a diverse focus on different aspects of daily life. But how exactly are these narratives being presented? 
There seems to be main two display styles and focuses, and sometimes a combination of both. And that's through either a focus on landscape or people, trying to invoke a sense of the prehistoric landscape in the museum with reconstructions of sites or large aerial photographs, or perhaps just paintings of contemporary landscapes. Or for a focus on people, trying to connect visitors to the people of the past, either through putting text panels in the first person, or using facial reconstructions, or putting human remains on display to try and give that physical connection. And sometimes in smaller museums that have less prehistory in their collections, there's a tendency to focus more on just regional archaeology. So prehistory not really having its own identity and presented alongside material from later time periods within this regional focus. Unfortunately, something I have noticed is a, a general misrepresentation of women. I know this has been discussed quite a lot in the 1980s and the 90s, but it still seems to be quite prevalent. Often women aren't present in displays, and when they are, it's in these very stereotyped uh, gendered roles. And still, a small number that still use quite androcentric language, talking about evolution in terms of the evolution of mankind and early man. And sometimes there is a bit of an exoticization of prehistory to engage the visitor with those ritual and shamanic aspects and sort of presenting the people of prehistory as other, serving to exoticize the period in a similar way to how early ethnographic museums exoticize non-Western cultures. And often when the process of archaeology is put on display, it's always alongside uh, prehistory displays. So how am I finding out how people engage with these different displays. Part of my methodology involves tracking surveys. This is uh, one that I completed at the British Museum. So I start off with a very schematic floor plan of the gallery, and then I can put on this the route of the visitor. I can record where they're stopping, what they're looking at, and how long they stop for. But I can also record different interactions, whether they're photographing certain cases or text panels, if they're perhaps not actively engaging and just on their phone, or if they're calling a friend over to look at something. And from doing this, I can then work out the average dwell time at each case and text panel and look at the visitor frequency, as well as working out the average dwell time for the gallery as a whole. And from this information, I can then create heat maps, which can then visually show how the space is being used. And so far, I've uh, collected 402 of these. And to support my tracking data, I'm also undertaking questionnaire data collection. So to find out what people really think about prehistory and the particular displays. So I'm quite open-ended in the questions that I use. I don't really want to restrict the responses of the visitor. And it's been quite eye-opening so far. Lots of respondents coming up with answers I couldn't possibly have predicted. And so this qualitative data is really useful <coughs> for starting to find key themes and words that come up in association with prehistory. And to date, I've done uh, 408 of these. And so today, I'll be presenting on three museums where I've undertaken this data collection. I'm presenting my results from North Lincolnshire Museum, which is in Scunthorpe, which is a regional museum, Western Park Museum, a city museum in Sheffield, and Torquay Museum, a local museum in Torquay, Devon. And so in total from these three case studies, I have visitor data from 340 visitors. And so to start off with, this is a bit of a brief description of the displays at North Lincolnshire Museum based on some of those display variables I introduced at the start. So at North Lincolnshire Museum, prehistory is covered from the Paleolithic through to the Iron Age. It's located in a room focused on archaeology of the region, which is sort of split into two segments, one of which is focused just on prehistory. And it's presented in a chronological framework with a very strong local focus. And as you can see from the pictures, it's quite a vibrant display, and each period is associated with a different colour. So the Bronze Age is blue, sorry, the Bronze Age is yellow, Stone Age is blue, and the Iron Age is red. And for extra interpretation, there's a little table where children can play games, and a few tactile elements, there's a couple of axes and a pot. Western Park Museum, again, the time span covered is the Paleolithic through to the Iron Age. And similarly, it's located alongside archaeology in, inside an open plan room. And the narrative, again, is chronological with a strong regional focus. Colour scheme is a bit more subdued in comparison to the vibrant colours at Scunthorpe. There's a lot of neutral grey and brown furniture, but the backings of case are either purple, as you see here, or light blue, or quite a vibrant green you see in the bottom there. 
For extra interpretation, there's quite a lot. There's a roundhouse that visitors can go inside, they can dress up, they can play games, there are little uh, videos they can watch, there's a tactile hand axe, and there's also sometimes an object handling desk available. At Torquay Museum, time period covered here is Paleolithic to the Bronze Age, but the majority of the displays are Paleolithic because it's primarily presenting the material from the nearby site of Kent's Cavern. And here, prehistory gets its very own room called the Ancestors Gallery, and the narrative is chronological with a local focus again. Colour scheme again is quite neutral, lots of light brown and grey, and the text panels are predominantly black with quite vibrant texts of yellow and blue. For extra interpretation, there's this um, interactive station in the middle where there's a rotating display case, there are little binoculars to look into, mini dioramas to discover, as well as videos. And there's also a tactile woolly rhino skull that visitors can actually touch. So these are the visitor demographics for the questionnaire respondents across the three museums. I've got roughly a 50-50 female male representation, although slightly more women than men filled out my questionnaires at Westman Park. For age groups, uh, North Lincolnshire Museum and Torquay, most respondents in the over 60 age category, whereas at Western Park Museum, there's a bit more of a division between the different age categories and quite a lot in the 21 to 30. For nationality, again, across the three uh, museums, they're mostly British, but at Western Park, there's a bit more diversity in terms of the nationalities represented. And for residents, uh, split primarily between local residents and residents within the wider UK. Uh, North Lincolnshire Museum, there are no overseas residents there in the sample, and that really reflects the local demographic there. So across the three museums, I asked people, what does prehistory mean to you? And from this, I got 159 respondents. I put all of their answers into a word cloud generator to try and find out which words come up most frequently in association with the period. And so here is the resulting word cloud and how many times they're mentioned. And so most popular is age, which comes up 66 times. And that's because lots of people are talking about the free age system, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. And you'll see that of those, Bronze Age comes up the most popular. Second to that is history, comes up 40 times. And that's because people are either defining prehistory in terms of history, or because there's a bit of confusion about the difference between the two. But after that, really, nothing else is coming up in big numbers. And that's because there is such a diverse number of responses that I get for this question that nothing else really comes up that significantly. And so to try and uh, go a bit deeper into this, I then split these uh, responses up into the most popular categories that come up. And so the one I've just mentioned is people referring to specific time periods. And I split that up a little bit further. And so these are the number of respondents across the three museums that mention the different periods. So again, free age system is doing pretty well. Um, but the subdivisions of the Stone Age, not so well. So Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, not very well at all. In fact, only one person at North Lincolnshire Museum mentioned the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic. And this was most disappointing for me when I was stood in the middle of Torquay Museum, in the middle of a Stone Age collection, which has got a lot of Paleolithic material on display, and nobody mentioned it. Lots of people talking about <coughs> tools, metalwork, and pottery in their responses. And there's a general understanding that prehistory is pre-writing, um, but there are also other ways that people are defining it. Lots of respondents defining it as pre-Roman, or before civilization, or before BC. Also referring to other older time periods that aren't prehistorics, Romans and Vikings come up a lot. In some of my other case studies, the ancient Egyptians come up quite a lot. And uh, in terms of prehistoric sites that are mentioned, probably comes as no surprise that Stonehenge is winning on that. Orkney gets a few mentions, and at Torquay Museum, there's a, a few mentions of the local prehistoric sites on Dartmoor and Kent's Cavern. So how exactly are people engaging with these spaces? This is a heat map uh, from North Lincolnshire Museum based on the visitor frequency from my tracking surveys. And what I've done here is I've colour coded it so that the light blue areas are the colder areas, less frequently visited. And then the hotter, most frequently visited areas are your red colour, then your orange and then your yellow. And I've shown this based on visitor frequency rather than dwell time, because by focusing on dwell time alone can be a little bit distorting. Uh, for example, this text panel over here has 2% of visitors stopping there, but uh, probably that one person that did stop there 
has spent 157 seconds. So just looking at 157 seconds, you'd think, oh, this is a really popular text panel, but unfortunately it isn't so. Um, and in general, it's mostly the text panels in this space that are the colder areas, apart from this one case here, which contains uh, a lot of lithic <coughs> material. Something that comes up in questionnaires as things that respondents aren't really that interested in. And this case suffers in particular because it's directly opposite um, another case which is full of sort of star objects. Um, in terms of the most popular part of this gallery is the Appleby log boat down here, which has this really commanding case on the back wall. Um, but then the second most popular are these two cases on the Iron Age. Now what's interesting with this is one of these cases is full of pottery, and that always comes up in questionnaires as something that respondents aren't really that interested in. Yet here, a case full of prehistoric pottery is the second most popular. And I think perhaps it's because it focuses on the local Iron Age site of Dragonby, sort of connecting with the local demographic here. Another popular case is the in-situ beaker burial. People love human remains. That comes up quite a lot in my tracking data. And then here is the heat map for Western Park Museum. And because not all of it is British prehistory, I've tried to highlight those areas with the purple boxes. So, unfortunately for me, the most visited space isn't prehistoric. It's the case over there, which has archaeological material from 1540 onwards. And similarly to the Appleby logboat case, it's got quite a commanding position within the gallery. And opposite that case is a similar tall, long case, which has the prehistoric material in it. And this is quite well visited, and people spending just under a minute here. But by far, the star area is the roundhouse. Uh, most people are sort of going in, making a beeline for the roundhouse and not often looking around at everything else. It's very popular. Another popular prehistory display here is the Iron Age talks and the Romano-British coins and shiny things. Often visitors can act a little bit like magpies, I've noticed. And so these things tend to be quite popular. For cold areas, um, thankfully none of the prehistory, um, it's a few of the benches, a couple of the videos and the object handling desk. But the object handling desk isn't always there, so that kind of explains why it's got this low frequency. As is Torquay Museum, again, like the other two, it's quite a warm looking heat map, got three red hot areas here, and the hottest of which is a case on the Neanderthals. And they've been quite careful in their selection of objects in this case, there's not too many. There's a Neanderthal skull, scimitar cat skull, some tools, mammoth tooth. Um, and here there's quite a lot of skeletal material and people really engage with that. And two of the other cases most frequently visited have this as well, some hippo bones, bear skull, another hominin skull. Um, and some of the other cases that don't have this material and that just have the objects are less frequently visited. Uh, the second most popular case is the interactive station, which is used by both children and adults. And again, it's the text panels that suffer as being the colder areas, but there is one text panel just over there which isn't visited at all in my sample. And that's this wonderful text panel. Um, it suffers because it's right by the entrance, sort of hidden away a little bit. It's also next to one of the more popular cases, and it is focusing on different stages of flint napping. And something that I found with some of my other case studies is that if there's a tactile hand axe to hold, or if there's a video about flint napping, it's much more engaging than looking at various photographs of the processes with some very large descriptions. It's a bit text heavy. So I also explicitly asked visitors, what do you most like about the displays? And these are the most popular responses across the three museums, for the most part supporting the tracking data. So at North Lincolnshire Museum, a lot of respondents mentioning the Appleby log boat, which was the hottest area. At Torquay Museum, it was the animal bones, again, those popular cases. And at Western Park Museum, the roundhouse, that most popular of the prehistory displays. Across all three museums, a lot of respondents said they loved the information and how informative the displays were, which perhaps doesn't quite go with the lack of people visiting text panels, but perhaps they're getting their information in slightly different ways. And by far the most popular thing across all three museums is how much respondents really like the style of displays and the layout, working really well in those three museums. And that is really demonstrated by the three very warm heat maps. I've done this elsewhere and had very sad, uh, cold looking heat maps, so these ones are really positive. At Torquay Museum, visitors still a little bit confused about what prehistory is. A lot of people talking about non prehistory displays in this question. And at North Lincolnshire Museum and Western Park, there's a real appreciation of the local focus of displays. 
And at North Lincolnshire Museum, a lot of respondents saying how much they love the pottery, which again was one of the hotter cases. So overall, for all of these responses, um, I had 141 respondents. Only 3% of people chose not to answer this question. Yet when I asked them, what do you least like about the displays? Uh, 92 respondents answered and 28% of people chose not to answer this question, either leaving it blank, putting a dash in, or writing not applicable. And the most popular response was nothing. And after that, the critiques were so varied that nothing really comes up that high. Um, and North Lincolnshire <coughs> Museum, I suppose, the second most popular critique was there's lots of displays of similar artifacts, which was true. Um, and at Western Park Museum, they're saying it could be bigger and that they had perhaps a few more interactives like some of the other parts of the museum. But on the whole, it was really positive. Um, so today I've only really presented on a very small snapshot of my data collection so far. And so I've got a few other things that I found out along the way. Uh, firstly, that timelines and context seems to be really important for engaging people. Um, often frames of reference of prehistory aren't always there with visitors. And so to be able to have that context to tap into, that narrative to follow is really important. I also asked the question, what do you most like about prehistory? And this isn't specific to displays. And for this, I often get the answer that people love the mystery of the period and the sort of sense of discovery. Yet they also said the thing they least like is the amount of speculation involved and the guesswork. So the ambiguity that really characterizes our interpretation of prehistory can either be really engaging or really disengaging depending on how it's framed. And a tactile hands-on experience as well as interactives and immersive elements also really popular. We saw that with Western Park and the Roundhouse at Torquay Museum with this interactive station. And the power of place can be important too, the local focus being really appreciated at those three museums. And when asked what visitors wanted to see more of, lots of respondents mentioning finding out more about other aspects of daily life. And of course, shiny things and skeletal remains are always popular. So thank you very much for listening.